Alright everyone, uh, today Chinese man is going to walk through a leak code easy problem. Uh, this is part of the dynamic programming list and it's called is subsequence. So f first is, I'm going to read over the question. Uh, given a string s and a string t, check if s is a subsequence of t. So that's, that means that if s is a part of t, and I can assume that there's only lowercase English letters in S and T. T is potentially very long, and S is a short string. So a subsequence of a string is a new string which is formed from the original string by deleting some, can be none of the characters without disturbing the relative positions of the remaining characters. So example is ace is a subsequence of A, B, C, D, E, but A, E, C is not, because a, C, E, if you delete B and D, it becomes A, C, E, but you can't get A, E, C because the D comes before E. So, give an example, A, B, C, and that would be if we deleted H, G, D, it would become A, B, C, but if it's A, X, C, there's no X in here, so it can't do it. So, uh, what we're being asked is to find out if S is subsequence of T. So subsequence, um, if S uh, can be found in T, given some or none uh, deletions in T, with no rearrangements. So. The follow-up question, which we want to take into account because um, that way we can plan our solution better. If there are lots of incoming s, for example s1 to sk, where k is over a billion, and you want to check one by one to see if t is a subsequence, how would you change your code? So essentially if we get this function called a lot with a different s's, but with the same t. So, I would think if we had some kind of mapping on T and we had cached that, then it would be easier to find new lookups in it. But also keep in mind that the boundary conditions here is probably a hint that T is potentially very long and S is a short string. So, in this case, let's think about how we would do this. What's the brute force strategy? The brute force strategy is for every string we take s and we loop through it. So for example here we have a, b, c and then for every character uh, we loop through t until it's found and then we move on with s. So for example for a uh, we find the A and we stop. For B, we keep on going through T from the last known position until it gets to B and then we stop. And then for C, we keep on going until we find C and we stop. And if it gets all the way to the end, then it's sub uh, sequence. If it doesn't, then it's not. So in this second example, for example, A, X, C, A it's found. X, it looks at the string, does not find X, it stops. But let's assume there isn't X, but let's say it's the end. We find X at the end, it stops, and then we try to look for C, and we can't find C. So essentially it has to go through the first loop. So let's do the brute force solution first, which is, let's loop through S. Uh, and then we also loop through T. So we're just creating two loops here. So for every S we'll go through the rest of T, but we don't have to start at zero, we can start at wherever the last known position is at. So we want to have a last known for um, this where we are in T. So 
position t is a tracker variable and then here we just go through it so we look for what the current uh, string is and actually let's also declare our result equals to um, true and then we'll set to false if it can't find it so we're gonna look for um, So this is looking through the string of i, and then, so I mean, sorry, the string at s, at character position i, so it'll kind of go through every character of it, and then we'll want to keep track of that position of t, and then we just look through the rest. So, This will keep track of whether it's found in that second string or not. And then if it is found, so if t dot car at um, j then is found equals true, and then position at t becomes j uh, plus one. So that way when we start, it'll be at the next character afterwards. And then if it is found, then great. If it's not found, then not so good. So if it's found, it's set to true. So after we're out of that for loop, um, we don't actually have to keep on going through the rest of the string though, because this is just if it's found. So here we'll break out of that for loop. And then here it's if is found, then yay, that's good. Otherwise, if it's not found, then we'll. That means that the overall result is false, and we can return false as well. So this should somewhat work, I think. So this got accepted, but the problem being um, when we is that it's not a very good solution. So let's think about why. Uh, we'll look for, I guess, the big O um, complexity analysis. So notice that we're going through all of I, I mean, sorry, all of S, and then all of T. So S is seem pretty short, so O of T is going to be the longer string. And at the very least, we have to go through t at least once. So this seems like it might be an O of t solution because here we're pretty much traversing all of t. If it's found, then great. It'll stop earlier. If it's not found, it'll just keep on going until the end of t. So I believe that's O of n. O of n might actually be enough to solve this one without the follow-up because the follow-up we want to improve efficiency because we're using the same t but the original one O of n seems pretty reasonable can we do it earlier? Not without scanning all of t anyways so I think that's probably the best we can do so we'll just click on submit and we get a wrong answer which is a good thing in a way for example, AXC, we, we... Interesting. Okay, so let's find out why. So here we have a loop that goes through all of S. And if it's not found in this loop, it'll set the result to false and return result as false. So how do we get true? because they didn't find x. So let's do some console logs here just to check. Looking for... Oh, I made a really silly mistake here. 
it just f tries to find it pulls the character at um, out of T at J but it doesn't actually compare it to anything so we want to make sure that it does so if that is equal to look for then we do that so let's try using that as a test case so that was just a pretty silly mistake on my part there So let's just submit. Interesting. So this finds A, B, C, but it still returns false. So the question is why? So we're looking for that character, and if it's found, we'll say that's found. this will go through it to see where it finds it and where it doesn't find it. So it looks for A, it finds a 0, looking for B, and it doesn't find B, but why? It found A at 0, then it starts at 1. So J starts at 1 and then ah typo there instead of t++ plus plus, it was j++ plus plus. just going to take out the console logs just for speed and then run this again Well, this was pretty embarrassing. So the runtime was faster than most of the uh, JavaScript submissions. Memory was quite low, but it was a lot of typos and a lot of silly mistakes. But hey, it happens. The purpose of practice is to make sure you do it enough times that when it matters, you don't make these silly mistakes. Now let's look back here. Now, if there are lots of incoming S, so there are a lot of strings, of s and this function gets run repeatedly we want to find out if t has this subsequence or not so how do we do that how do we optimize it so we've run this every time it runs it'll be o of t uh, the length of t on in terms of time complexity because every time we have to potentially look through the entire string now if the s's were the same we could cache the results so using memoize for example um, if we get the same string again instead of looking through it we'll just return it out of uh, hash map for example but these are different s's I'm thinking it's not really that possible because you can have different deletions inside of t it was trying to find a specific sequence Yeah, I'm not really thinking of a scenario where it doesn't have to search through all of T. If we can turn T, for, for example, from a string into an array or into a map function that counts the number of times that the characters are there, that stuff can be cached to make it faster, but turning it into a hash map doesn't really help us. It, for example, tells us whether the characters exist. If we're just trying to find out if it exists, easy. Um, turn to a hash map, cache it, and then just look for the characters existing. But we also want to keep the order. And that order, while the actual order we're looking for doesn't change, the sequence within that also changes. So I actually don't have a good answer to that. So while we've done a fairly simple s 
and quick solution here for finding the easy case. We don't have a good solution for the follow-up. I'll probably look up the answer for that later. It says it's dynamic programming, so instead of if the function wasn't called a lot of times, you just had a lot of those strings. I'm thinking of dynamic programming both top down and bottom up solution is the recursion formula and in a way we could do this recursively every time you find a character we take the remaining string and then try to find the character that's I mean the characters that are still left so for example if we're looking for ABC in a string we find A at position say 2 and then the rest of the string after 2 is this new T and the string that without the uh, A is the new S. So that can be done recursively. But the question is, why would we unless we could somehow cache it? So I guess the follow-up there is we could cache those results. For example, given an S and given a T. And then hope that there's a lot of similar sequences here it says it's over a billion, so there could be that. So caching that could work. Is there an iterative approach though? Because the recursive seems like it could be very messy in terms of space and the call stack. So iteratively, I feel like there is, but nothing really comes to mind at the moment. So I guess I'll call that a day for this question for now, and when I think of follow-up, I'll code that and call it uh, lead code easy uh, plus one. Not exactly lead code medium, but easy plus one if for this follow-up solution, if we have that. But yeah, thanks for watching, and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials on coding, cooking, a bunch of other stuff as well. Hopefully I'll see you soon.